An aileron is a hinge flight control surface usually forming part of the trailing edge of each wing of a fixed-wing aircraft. Movement around this axis is called rolling or banking. The aileron was first patented by the British scientist and inventor Matthew Piers Watt Bolton in 1868 based on his 1864 paper on aerial locomotion. Even though there was extensive prior art in the 19th century for the aileron and its functional analogue, wing warping, in 1906 the United States granted an expansive patent to the Wright brothers of Dayton, Ohio for the invention of a system of aerodynamic control that manipulated an airplane's control surfaces. Considerable litigation ensued with the United States over the legal issues of lateral roll control until World War I which compelled the U.S. government to legislate a legal resolution. History The name aileron, from French meaning little wing, also refers to the extremities of a bird's wings used to control their flight. It first appeared in print in the 7th edition of Castle's French-English Dictionary of 1877, with its lead meaning of small wing. In the context of powered airplanes it appears in print about 1908. Prior to that, ailerons were often referred to as rudders, their older technical sibling, with no distinction between their orientations and functions, or more descriptively as horizontal rudders. Among the earliest printed aeronautical use of aileron was that in the French aviation journal La Rarophile of 1908. Ailerons had more or less completely supplanted other forms of lateral control, such as wing warping, by about 1915, well after the function of the rudder and elevator flight controls had been largely standardized. Although there were previously many conflicting claims over who first invented the aileron and its function, i.e., lateral or roll control, the flight control device was invented and described by the British scientist and metaphysicist Matthew Piers Watt Bolton in his 1864 paper on aerial locomotion. He was the first to patent an aileron control system in 1868. Bolton's description of his lateral flight control system was both clear and complete. It was the first record we have of appreciation of the necessity for active lateral control as distinguished from passive lateral stability. With this invention of Bolton's we have the birth of the present-day three-talk method of airborne control, as was praised by Charles Manley. This was also endorsed by C.H. Gibbs Smith. Bolton's British patent, no. 392 of 1868, issued about 35 years before ailerons were reinvented in France, became forgotten and lost from sight until after the flight control device was in general use. Gibbs Smith stated on several occasions that if the Bolton patent had been revealed at the time of the Wright brothers' legal filings, they might not have been able to claim priority of invention for the lateral control of flying machines. The fact that the Wright brothers were able to gain a patent in 1906 did not invalidate Bolton's lost and forgotten invention. Bolton had described and patented ailerons in 1868 and they were not used on manned aircraft until they were employed on Robert Esnald Peltieri's glider in 1904, although in 1871 a French military engineer, Charles Renard, built and flew an unmanned glider incorporating ailerons on each side, activated by a Bolton-style pendulum-controlled single-axis autopilot device. The pioneering U.S. aeronautical engineer Octave Chanute published descriptions and drawings of the Wright Brothers' 1902 glider in the leading aviation periodical of the day, La Rarophile, in 1903. This prompted Esnald Peltieri, a French military engineer, to build a Wright-style glider in 1904 that used ailerons in lieu of wing warping. 
The French journal La Rérophile then published photos of the ailerons on Esnald Pelteri's glider which were included in his June 1905 article, and its ailerons were widely copied afterward. The Wright brothers used wing warping instead of ailerons for roll control on their glider in 1902, and about 1904 their Flyer II was the only aircraft of its time able to do a coordinated banked turn. During the early years of powered flight the Wrights had better roll control on their designs than airplanes that used movable surfaces. From 1908, as aileron designs were refined it became clear that ailerons were much more effective and practical than wing warping. Ailerons also had the advantage of not weakening the airplane's wing structure as did the wing warping technique, which was one reason for Esnald Pelteri's decision to switch to ailerons. By 1911 most biplanes used ailerons rather than wing warping. By 1915 ailerons had become almost universal on monoplanes as well. The U.S. government, frustrated by the lack of its country's aeronautical advances in the years leading up to World War I, enforced a patent pool effectively putting an end to the Wright Brothers' patent war. The Wright brothers quietly changed their aircraft flight controls from wing warping to the use of ailerons at that time as well. Other early aileron designers others who were previously thought to have been the first to introduce ailerons included American John J. Montgomery included spring-loaded trailing edge flaps on his second glider. These were operable by the pilot as ailerons. In 1886 his third glider design used rotation of the entire wing rather than just a trailing edge portion for roll control. By his own accounts all of these changes in addition to his use of an elevator for pitch control provided entire control of the machine in the wind, preventing it from upsetting. New Zealander Richard Pierce reputedly made a powered flight in a monoplane that included small ailerons as early as 1902, but his claims are controversial and sometimes inconsistent, and, even by his own reports, his aircraft were not well controlled. In 1906 Alberto Santos Dumont's 14 bis was one of the earliest aileron-equipped aircraft to fly, as it was modified to have added octagonal planform interplane ailerons in its outermost wing bays in November of that year for its concluding flight. Sessions at the Chateau de Bagatelle's grounds, but those roll control surfaces were not true. Trailing edge ailerons hinged directly to the wing panel's framework for the 14 bis. These were instead pivoted around a horizontal axis centered on the forward outboard interplane struts, and protruded forward past the wing's leading edges. On May 18, 1908, engineer and aircraft designer Frederick Baldwin, a member of the Aerial Experiment Association headed by Alexander Graham Bell, flew their first aileron-controlled aircraft, the AEA White Wing, which was later copied by the U.S. aeronautical pioneer Glenn Curtis. Henry Farman's ailerons on his 1909 Farman III were the first to resemble ailerons on modern aircraft as they were hinged directly to the wing, planform structure, and thus were viewed as having a reasonable claim as the ancestor of the modern-day aileron. Wingtip ailerons were also used on the contemporary Blériot 8. The first known flight were the aircraft to use the joystick and rudder bar pioneering form of modern flight controls in a single airframe, and the 1911 vintage Curtis model deep pusher biplane had spanways rectangular interplane ailerons of a similar nature to those on the final form of the Santos Dumont 14 bis, but mounted on and pivoted from the outer rear interplane struts instead. Another very late contestant included the American William Whitney Christmas who claimed to have invented the aileron in the 1914 patent for what would become the Christmas Bullet which was built in 1918. Both Bullet prototypes crashed during their first flights, when their wings broke off in flight due to flutter as a result of being deliberately unbraced. Patents and lawsuits regardless of the 1868 Bolton patent and the extensive prior art created by multiple other experimenters. 
The Wright Brothers Ohio patent attorney Henry Toulman filed an expansive patent application, and on May 22, 1906 they were granted U.S. Patent 821,393. The patent's importance lay in its claim of a new and useful method of controlling an airplane. The patent application included the claim for the lateral control of aircraft flight that was not limited to wing warping, but through any manipulation of the angular relations of the lateral margins of the airplane's wings, varied in opposite directions. Thus the patent explicitly stated that other methods besides wing warping could be used for adjusting the outer portions of an airplane's wings to different angles on its right and left sides to achieve lateral roll control. Curiously, John J. Montgomery was granted U.S. Patent 831173 at nearly the same time for his methods of wing warping. Both the Wright brothers' patent and Montgomery's patent were reviewed and approved by the same patent examiner at the United States Patent Office, William Townsend. At the time, Townsend indicated that both methods of wing warping were invented independently and were sufficiently different to each justify their own patent award. Multiple U.S. court decisions favored the expansive Wright patent, which the Wright brothers sought to enforce with licensing fees starting from $1,000 per airplane, and astoundingly said to range up to $1,000 per day, according to Lewis S. Casey, a former curator of the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C., and other researchers. Due to the patent they had received the right stood firmly on the position that all flying using lateral roll control anywhere in the world would only be conducted under license by them. The right subsequently became embroiled with numerous lawsuits they launched against every recalcitrant aircraft builder which used lateral flight controls and the brothers were consequently blamed for playing a major role in the lack of growth in aviation industry competition in the United States, comparative to other nations like Germany leading up to and during World War I. Years of protracted legal guerrilla warfare ensued with many other aircraft builders until the United States entered World War I, when its government imposed a legislated agreement between all U.S. Parties which resulted in royalty payments of 1% to the rights. Ongoing controversy There are still conflicting claims today over who first invented the aileron. Other 19th century engineers and scientists, including Charles Renard, Alphonse Penaud, and Louis Morillard, had described similar flight control surfaces, possibly serving as further inspiration to Bolton aside from Count Desterno. Another technique for lateral flight control, wing warping, was also described or experimented with by several people including Jean-Marie Labris, John Montgomery, Clement Adder, Edson Gallaudet, D.D. Wells, and Hugo Matulla, aviation historian C.H. Gibbs Smith wrote that the aileron was dot one of the most remarkable inventions of aeronautical history, which was immediately lost sight of. In 1906 the Wright brothers obtained a patent not for the invention of an airplane but for the invention of a system of aerodynamic control that manipulated a flying machine's surfaces including lateral flight control, although rudders, elevators and ailerons had been invented long before their efforts began. Irrespective of such controversies it was Bolton, undisputedly, who was the first to patent ailerons, doing so in 1868. The ailerons used by Esnald Peltery in 1904 followed Bolton's concept, although it is not known whether he had studied the 1868 patent or if he independently reinvented them. Flight Dynamics Pairs of ailerons are typically interconnected so that when one is moved downward, the other is moved upward. The downgoing aileron increases the lift on its wing while the upgoing aileron reduces the lift on its wing producing a rolling moment about the aircraft's longitudinal axis. Ailerons are usually situated near the wingtip, but may sometimes also be situated nearer the wing route. 
Modern airliners may also have a second pair of ailerons on their wings, and the terms outboard aileron and inboard ailerons are used to describe these positions respectively. An unwanted side effect of aileron operation is adverse yaw, a yawing moment in the opposite direction to the roll. Using the ailerons to roll an aircraft to the right produces a yawing motion to the left. As the aircraft rolls, adverse yaw is caused partly by the change in drag between the left and right wing. The rising wing generates increased lift which causes increased induced drag. The descending wing generates reduced lift which causes reduced induced drag. Profile drag caused by the deflected ailerons may add further to the difference, along with changes in the lift vectors as one rotates back while the other rotates forward. In a coordinated turn, adverse yaw is effectively compensated by the use of the rudder, which results in a side force on the vertical tail that opposes the adverse yaw by creating a favorable yawing moment. Another method of compensation is differential ailerons, which have been rigged such that the downgoing aileron deflects less than the upgoing one. In this case the opposing your moment is generated by a difference in profile drag between the left and right wing tips. Prize ailerons accentuate this profile drag imbalance by protruding beneath the wing of an upward deflected aileron, most often by being hinged slightly behind the leading edge and near the bottom of the surface. With the lower section of the aileron surface's leading edge protruding slightly below the wing's undersurface when the aileron is deflected upwards, substantially increasing profile drag on that side. Ailerons may also be designed to use a combination of these methods. With ailerons in the neutral position, the wing on the outside of the turn develops more lift than the opposite wing due to the variation in airspeed across the wing span, which tends to cause the aircraft to continue to roll. Once the desired angle of bank has been obtained, the pilot uses opposite aileron to prevent the angle of bank from increasing due to this variation in lift across the wingspan. This minor opposite use of the control must be maintained throughout the turn. The pilot also uses a slight amount of rudder in the same direction as the turn to counteract adverse yaw into producer coordinated turn wherein the fuselage is parallel to the flight path. A simple gauge on the instrument panel called the slip indicator, also known as the ball, indicates when this coordination is achieved. Aileron components, horns and aerodynamic counterbalances particularly on larger or faster aircraft control forces may be extremely heavy. Borrowing a discovery from boats that extending a control surface's area forward of the hinge lightens the forces needed first appeared on ailerons. During World War I when ailerons were extended beyond the wingtip and provided with a horn ahead of the hinge, known as overhung ailerons, possibly the best-known examples are the Fokker Drive I and Fokker D7. Later examples brought the counterbalance in line with the wing to improve control and reduce drag. This is seen less often now, due to the Fry's type aileron which provides the same benefit. Trim tabs Trim tabs are small movable sections resembling scaled-down ailerons located at or near the trailing edge of the aileron. On most propeller-powered aircraft the rotation of the propeller induces a counteracting roll movement due to Newton's third law of motion, in that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. To relieve the pilot of having to provide continuous pressure on the stick in one direction trim tabs are provided to adjust or trim out the pressure needed against any unwanted movement. The tab itself is deflected in relation to the aileron, causing the aileron to move in the opposite direction. Trim tabs come in two forms, adjustable and fixed. A fixed trim tab is manually bent to the required amount of deflection, while the adjustable trim tab can be controlled from within the cockpit so that different power settings or flight attitudes can be compensated for. Some large aircraft from the 1950s used free-floating control surfaces that the pilot controlled only through the deflection of trim tabs. 
in which case additional tabs were also provided to fine-tune the control to provide straight and level flight. Spades Spades are flat metal plates, usually attached to the aileron lower surface, ahead of the aileron hinge, by a lever arm. They reduce the force needed by the pilot to deflect the aileron and are often seen on aerobatic aircraft. As the aileron is deflected upward, the spade produces a downward aerodynamic force which tends to rotate the whole assembly so as to further deflect the aileron upward. The size of the spade determines how much force the pilot needs to apply to deflect the aileron. A spade works in the same manner as a horn but is more efficient due to the longer moment arm. Mass balance weights to prevent control surface flutter. The center of lift of the control surface should be behind the center of gravity of that surface. To achieve this, lead weights may be added to the front of the aileron. In some aircraft the aileron construction may be too heavy to allow this system to work without huge weight increases. In this case, the weight may be added to a lever arm to move the weight well out in front to the aileron body. In addition to reducing flutter, mass balances also reduce the stick forces required to move the control surface in flight.